You know, as men, we want to be able to do everything ourselves. Sometimes it feels like that if you ask for help, that you're weak. And this could be in a uh, work-related issue. It could be in a um, social issues. It could be something in your life that is internal, emotional. Um, doesn't matter what it is. We like to be islands unto ourselves, these solid rocks that can handle anything. We don't need anybody's help, whether it be fixing the faucet or fixing myself. I got this. I was like that for sure. I mean, I know what that's like 100% for sure. And one of the ways that I've been successful in my life with various aspects of personal growth and development, whether it be in business or in my own mental health, or whether it be in, say, re recovery from alcohol and drugs, um, various things, is to be able to receive help, be willing to receive help. And that can feel, just to be able to get to the point when you're will, where you're willing to say, okay, I'll go get help. That can feel like such a weak point. But that's all mental. It doesn't have to feel weak. That's just in your head. That's just perception. That's just ego. You know, at least I realized that for me. And I've been this way when I, when I needed to get help with PTSD and I couldn't manage and I felt like I was going crazy and I felt like that I was on a downward spiral emotionally and mentally that I was literally going crazy and not the cool kind of crazy. Some people think, oh, I'm crazy. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about when you actually get there. When, it's, when, it, when you're really looking over that abyss, it's a whole different thing. And uh, the only way I could conquer that was by getting help. You can't just go to the woods and, get, and, and jump into a tree stand and think that deer hunting is going to solve it. You can't just get on your motorcycle and be like, uh, well, my therapist is the open road, like so many bikers in my industry and in my world like to say that's bullshit. It's a load of fucking bullshit. You're not going to think your way through it like that. It's not going to happen. You're running from it. It's going to chase you. The only way to get help, to, to get over some of these things is to get help. And I found this with PTSD. I found this with uh, alcoholism and getting over drugs. That there's, yes, there's a lot I could do on my own. And I didn't go to AA or NA. I refused to go to that bullshit. And I got over it and I never relapsed once. But I didn't do it alone. I never would have been able to do this alone. You need to have a support group. You need to be able to... And if you don't have one, get on the phone book, Google, go look for help from people you don't even know. That's what I did. I went to people I didn't know. I realized the people that I do know can't help me and don't want to help me and don't give a fuck or are trying to bring me down. So I need to be able to go outside of my comfort zone and look for help. One of the ways of looking for help is to be able to really get into the idea of accepting help and asking for help. That's the hardest part, but that's the, that's, I mean, that it's like magic. You ask for it and guess what? The shit happens. I'll give you a good example. Forget about alcoholism and addiction for a second. Let's talk about business. When I got my motorcycle shop going in Florida, not Los Angeles, I started it in Los Angeles and ran it for about three years in Los Angeles. But when I got to Florida, it really did feel like I had to restart it from scratch. It felt like a whole new experience. I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have loans. I didn't have financial backers that were going to pay for shit if I needed it. I was doing this all out of pocket. And I didn't have money. It's a pay to play industry. So what that means is the guys that you see getting articles written about them in the magazines, I don't care if it's Billy Lane, Orange County Choppers, whoever has that cover, You'll also find an advertisement from them within that magazine, usually a full page ad or a large ad that costs a lot per month. And they'll sign a contract with you. Easy Rider used to do this. Iron, all the major magazines, all of them had the same policy where if you were to take out, say, a full page ad and pay 3600 bucks a month, whatever it was for that ad, then they would also guarantee you in contract, in writing, 
that they would write a feature article about you and give you the cover. So that's the way the industry works. I thought it was journalism, that they would just find these cool dudes and write articles about them and whatever. Now, it has nothing to do with that. These magazines, from cover to cover, are paid advertisements. Each article that you'll see within there is also written about one of their advertisers. There's nothing random about this whole goddamn industry. Now with the internet, it's a little bit different because people are sharing content just to get you to look at their page. Say if it's Facebook, they'll share stuff that's not theirs just to get you to like it because it's an algorithm. It's different now. Back then we were dealing with the magazine industry. And I got in 2004, I think I got in five magazines. 2005, I got in another four or five magazines. 2006, I got in another four or five, six different magazines. This continued all the way up to about 2007. So I had a few year period where I was getting in magazines left and fucking right and I never paid for a single goddamn ad. And people were around me, that there was people that had well-established shops that have been in this town with shops for 15 years and that would come to me and say, Sky, I saw your magazine article. I saw that you, know, you were in this and that magazine at the same time last month. How are you doing this? And I would just be like, you know, I'm, I'm asking them. I call. I call up to the fucking magazine editors right on the phone. Just look for the fucking, get, buy a magazine, look for their phone number inside it, call them up and say, yo. And I do it aggressively, not being rude. I don't mean, when I say aggressive, I don't mean rude. But I'm not taking no for an answer. I have the most confidence that you can possibly imagine having. I know I'm the shit. I call them up and I tell them, this is Sky from Sinister. And I outright will ask them every time, why haven't you written an article about me? And they will always say, well, we don't know who you are. And then I would get cocky. Why, how do you not know? I started my shop in L.A. I'm the only one in the country doing this niche of building metric custom bikes as a shop. I'm uh, winning all the fucking shows. I, I'm doing this, that, and the other thing. And I would promote myself. And I would have this rehearsed. So every time I would be able to say this, I could say it. And I could say it right. And these people, every time, I don't care if it was... Easy Rider, I don't care what magazine, every time these people liked me, they were like, wow, well, sure, we'll give you a chance. And sometimes I only got a little tiny little write-up, but I'm in there, and that's a start, and it's free. And we had this website, and when we got uh, our article in uh, Road Bike Magazine, that's a metric, custom, a metric magazine for you know, Hondas, Yamaha, stuff like that, we were getting a 1,000 hits an hour on our website for that little tiny article they had, and that's for free. Everybody else in that fucking magazine had to pay. So I'm not trying to brag about how great I am in the motorcycle industry. The only point that I'm trying to make is that shit happens for people that ask. You have to ask. How did I get into these magazines? I asked, motherfucker. That's all I did. This guy across the street with his shop that wishes he was where I was at never took the time to ask. He sat over there with his thumb up his ass, wishing that he would get in these magazines, flipping through them, paying for them at the grocery store and taking them home and wishing he'd get in, and never just decided to ask. He thought there was some kind of glass ceiling, that you had to go through a process. The only way to do this is to pay. The only way to do this is to be on TV. The only way to do this, fuck that shit, man. I was never going to take that kind of route. I could take my own route. I've always used what I call guerrilla marketing when it comes to business. And my main skill with business is to be able to get people to like me and to ask for help. And people are always willing. It's a rule of business and it may be a rule of life too. But I'm going to tell you about the motorcycle industry because that's what I know about. It, people help in my industry. They help who they like. So you want a job in the industry? Go make friends with somebody. No shop owner is going to hire some random fuck, even if you got the best resume that's ever been. You could have just dropped out of God's ass onto the earth and you're a motorcycle god. Nobody gives a fuck, motherfucker, because they're going to hire their cousin Tony or whoever they know first, because that's the way it is. This whole industry started as mom and pop shops, and that's how it is even to this day. We hire who we like, and if you want to get somewhere, you have to ask and you have to be liked. And it just takes a certain amount of playing the game right. But that's also the way it works with other aspects of your life. If you want to get over addiction, you're going to need help. And if you want help, you're going to have to ask for it. Because it's a cold motherfucking world we live in. And a lot of people aren't going to give a shit about you. They're not going to come and 
coddle you and coochie-coo and say, hey, I saw that you might have a problem and maybe I can help you. You have to ask. And when you ask, that same person could be a wealth of knowledge. They could be a gold mine for you. So start looking around and start thinking who you can ask for help. We get by with a little help from our friends. Thanks for watching.